If you have been trying to code your Angular applications reactively, then you may have seen advice something to the tune of, if you are manually subscribing, then you are not coding reactively. Generally, it is advocated that you should use the async pipe in the template to handle your subscriptions, although there are other approaches we can use as well. This doesn't mean that it is inherently bad to subscribe manually, but when you do, what you are doing is not reactive. You will likely be imperatively handling data that you are manually pulling out of streams. Now, in my opinion, for whatever that is worth, this is all accurate enough, at least in the context of what is typically meant by coding reactively. An Angular application is still a reactive system, even if you aren't using RxJS at all, so the terminology is a bit confusing. From now on in this video, when I say reactive, I specifically mean the reified reactive approach with observables that is typically implied. And I'll link to a great blog post from Victor Savkin that talks about the difference between reified and transparent reactive programming. So like with the previous statement, if you have been coding reactively, then you might also have seen comments like, sometimes you do have to manually subscribe. I've been coding almost exclusively reactively for a while now, and I found that I wasn't really running into situations where I had to subscribe. I was always able to re-architect in some way if necessary to avoid a subscribe. But this brings up an important point that we'll get to in a moment. What extent should we go to to avoid manually subscribing? Is it even worth it for these edge cases? And are our clever workarounds really just imperative code pretending to be reactive? So recently I posted this question to Twitter, which spawned some interesting conversations with people in the Angular community. I got a lot of value out of these discussions, so I wanted to use this video to sort of summarize some of the key points. So first of all, the main point that keeps coming up where people feel that they have to subscribe is reacting to form changes like this. It doesn't have to be this exact example, but in general, triggering side effects from value changes in reactive forms seems to be a common area where people who are otherwise coding reactively are using manual subscribes. So I've set up an example for us to play with. Basically, I just have uh, two form fields here. And what I want to do is if I change the value in the first field, it will take that value, pass the value to a service, have the service return another value based on that value and then set it in the second field. And we can see that happening here. As I type in here, whatever I type in here is just duplicated down below with a little extra string attached to it. Now, obviously this is a contrived example, but it captures the use case of needing to react to a value change in one field and then set another field as a result. So the initial code we are starting with is the common imperative sort of way to handle this. And all we do is just subscribe to that value changes. And then within the subscription here, we set the value manually. And to make sure this subscription that we have created is properly unsubscribed, we just use the common sort of approach there as well, where we set up this destroy notifier. We trigger that in on destroy and we make sure that we're only taking this uh, stream until that destroy notifier is triggered. So that's going to handle cleaning up the subscription for us. So does this situation really require a manual subscribe? The short answer is no, it doesn't. Uh, the longer answer gets more into technically no, but is avoiding the subscribe really worth it? So here are some of the key ways that came up on how you could approach this situation. So what we're looking at now was a recommendation from Chow Tran, which I think is my favorite approach if we don't want to subscribe manually. So if you are using NGRX component store, then you can create an empty effect using this syntax in your store. And then you can pass that effect, whatever observable you want. And then as long as we have the correct typing, we can pass this effect, whatever observable we want. The component store will then automatically subscribe to this, which will trigger the observable and anything we have piped onto it. So that means that our observable here is going to be triggered. It's going to be subscribed. And that means that these piped operators are also going to be executed. And within that, we have a tap that is going to handle setting that value. So we still do the switch map here. We get the value we want. We use the tap to then set that value on field two. I also created a variation on this approach where I just created a generic uh, subscribe to method or subscribe to effect rather that could be passed any number of observables regardless of type and it will handle the subscription for you. 
So if I just uncomment that, and I also have an example set up here as well. So this is just uh, three separate observables on a timer here. And basically these are just going to sort of take turns uh, changing the value. But the main point is you can see here in field two, the value is constantly changing. So all three of these observables have been subscribed by passing them into this subscribe to effect that we design, uh, that we defined in the store. So we can see that that all works, but with this approach, we don't have a uh, proper typing here. And also keep in mind with the component store approach that it has to be provided to the component specifically. Otherwise it won't be destroyed when the component is destroyed and the subscription will not be unsubscribed. So if you were to provide your component store in root, for example, uh, the subscription wouldn't be uh, destroyed when this component's destroyed. And if you aren't using component store, but you did want to use an approach like this, uh, you could achieve something similar by using your own service that is provided at the component level, just like we're doing with the component store here. And you could use that to handle your subscription for you, just like the component store is doing here. Basically what the component store is doing is just subscribing to the observable for us and then automatically unsubscribing when the component is destroyed. And another method that I came up with for not manually subscribing in this scenario, although I'm sure I'm not the first person to think of this, uh, was to just use the async pipe in the template to trigger the subscribe. So just like we usually use the async pipe in the template when we want to use that data in the template, we are using the async pipe in the template even though we're not actually pulling that data out of the stream to display directly in the template. So I'll say up front with this approach that I don't think you should do this, but it is interesting. So it's similar to the last approach, we can just do whatever we want with the observable stream. So again, we're doing the switch map and then we're using that tap to trigger our side effect and set the value on field two. And again, I'll just show you over here that this does actually work. And then to trigger this observable, again, it's not gonna do anything until something actually subscribes to it. We are just passing the observable into this ng container in the template and we're using the async pipe. So because it's an ng container, it's not actually going to render anything uh, in the DOM, but it does allow us to actually trigger this subscribe still with the async pipe. And you can also pass in multiple observables to this one ng container to subscribe to if you want as well. So I think this creates a pretty clean and easy way to handle the subscribe and it doesn't require any dependencies, but the main downside is that it is a bit magical. It isn't obvious how this observable actually gets triggered. And Manfred Steyer mentioned the principle of least surprise in response to this. And I totally agree with that here, which is why I wouldn't recommend it. It's just a bit of a weird pattern and it's not clear what's going on. But nonetheless, it is kind of cool and I'm still not totally convinced that it's an entirely bad idea for auto unsubscribing observables. My intuition is that it's a bad idea and we probably shouldn't do it, but uh, if you do have any thoughts around it, please do leave a comment. So I wanted to focus mostly on the reactive ways to handle what we were discussing and how to trigger that side effect to set the form field because the methods using a subscriber are generally more well known and standard. But just to briefly mention some approaches that involve manual subscribes that were brought up in the discussion, we have the example we looked at initially using the typical take until approach. Some people use the ng neat until destroy decorator. Some people use a terminator service to handle unsubscribes. And all of these are great approaches, uh, but the one I am going to show here is the one I like the best. And it is interesting because it is so simple. It's far simpler than the reactive options we have looked at. So this does rely on you already using component store, but component store exposes a destroy notifier by default. So we can just use that to handle unsubscribing from any subscription. So again, we have a setup here like the initial imperative example, but to handle the unsubscribe, we are just using take until uh, this to home store dot destroy because we're providing the home store. And that means that this is gonna be automatically unsubscribed when this component is destroyed without us needing to set up an ng on destroy or our own destroy subject or anything like that. So back to the original question, should we really never subscribe in Angular apps when we're trying to code reactively? So in situations like this, where we need to do a bit of trickery to avoid a subscribe, is it really worth it when such a simple option like this is available? We don't want to just dogmatically code in certain ways because that's just what you're supposed to do. 
Are we really achieving anything by not having that little subscribe statement? Now, obviously you can do what you want and people are going to have different opinions, but here is my thinking on somewhat of a conclusion out of all of this. So when we are coding reactively, we generally avoid manually subscribing. So this has the huge benefit of not having to worry about unsubscribing from your subscriptions, but that's just a side benefit of reactive programming. Reactive programming involves not subscribing, but it isn't about not subscribing. At least in my view, the real benefit of programming reactively with RxJS is that your data sources, which are observable streams, are connected in an unbroken chain all the way from the source to its sync, for example, the template where it is being displayed. So our data sources can change as they please and all of our templates will automatically wrap to those changes with no pesky imperative code in between potentially introducing bugs. And there is a lot of power in the way we can compose streams together and control how they change over time. So when we subscribe, we are breaking out of this approach and into the more simple transparent reactivity that Angular implements. So in the examples we have looked at, does manually subscribing interfere with this goal of utilizing the power of observable streams? It does. We are running imperative code after subscribing to manually update the form field. But our reactive approaches are actually pretty imperative as well. Sure, we use streams and operators, but in the end, we use tap to pull data out of the stream and imperatively update the form field. The tap is nice in some ways to get data out of a stream because we don't need to manage a subscription to get the value. But in my view, what we are doing is still imperative. We are pulling data out of the stream and manually telling it where to go or what to do. That data is now sort of pulled out of that reactive world and exists outside of those streams and can no longer be composed together with the other observable streams and part of that whole reactive process. So like I hinted at before, in my view, these approaches are sort of like imperative code dressed up in reactive clothing. So this doesn't mean that these approaches that avoid subscribes are bad. In fact, I prefer it over manual subscribe still, but I think that falls firmly in the realm of personal opinion and style. I don't think we can say that not subscribing in this specific example is more reactive. Using a tap to set a form field manually is not reactive. In my opinion, for this to be a reactive process, we would need to have field 2's value be set from an observable stream that is derived in some way from other streams being composed together. So, what do you think about all of this? Uh, leave your comments below about your own experiences of situations where you have had to subscribe manually uh, when you were trying to code reactively, and what your opinion is on manually subscribing in general. So if there is one manual subscription I hope you will make, it's clicking the subscribe button down below to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one.